Welcome to this lecture on the general characteristics of connective tissue. The first thing that I want to focus on is the connective tissue matrix. Now, connective tissue itself is the most diverse, abundantly distributed tissue within the body. It is designed to support, protect, and bind organs together. There are three main parts that you want to look at. One is the cells, then the protein fibers that are contained outside of the cells, and then the ground substance. Some examples of connective tissue include the tendons and ligaments, body fat, cartilage and bone, and blood. When you are looking at the characteristics of the matrix, one of the things that you will see is cells. Now, each class of connective tissue has its own specific types of cells. For example, adipose tissue, which is fat tissue, has adipocytes, and cartilage has chondrocytes. The matrix is fairly open within the connective tissue, so most cells are not in direct contact with each other. These cells are called resonant cells because they are stationary cells that are permanently housed within that connective tissue. Here are some examples of resonant cells, the first one being fibroblasts. They are the most abundant cell in the connective tissue. They will produce fibers and ground substance of the extracellular matrix or the material outside of the cell. The second is adipocytes. They're also called fat cells. They will appear in clusters in some types of connective tissue. When they are the most dominant cell within that tissue, they are called adipose connective tissue. Mesenchymal cells are a type of embryonic stem cell. Stem cells will divide to replace any cells that are damaged, let's say, and that cell will then become a specific connective tissue cell in that tissue. Fixed macrophages. Macrophages are a type of white blood cell. They are dispersed widely throughout the matrix and they will phagocytize or engulf damaged cells or pathogens. Wandering cells. These cells are continuously moving throughout the connective tissue. They are components of the immune system. They may help repair damaged extracellular matrix, but they are a type of white blood cell that is used to help fight off pathogens. The types of wandering cells, we have mast cells. These are small cells that are very close to blood vessels. They will either secrete heparin, which is a chemical that inhibits blood clotting, or they will secrete histamine, which will dilate blood vessels. These cells are often involved in the inflammatory response. Plasma cells, these, these are a kind of white blood cell as well. They are formed from B lymphocytes. When they become activated by a pathogen, they will produce antibodies, and these antibodies will then seek out and immobilize the foreign pathogen. We have free macrophages. These are mobile phagocytic cells, and they function exactly like the macrophages as described earlier. And we also have the other leukocytes, including neutrophils, which again phagocytize bacteria. They are kind of the foot soldiers of the immune system. And the lymphocytes, which will attack and kill foreign materials as well. Besides the cells, we also want to look at protein fibers. The fibers function is to strengthen and support the tissue. A couple of those fibers being collagen fibers. These are unbranched cable-like fibers. They are very strong. They are somewhat flexible or elastic and they do resist stretching. They appear white in fresh tissue, but you will see them a lot within the tendons and ligaments. The next is reticular fibers. They are similar to collagen fibers, but they are thinner. They will form a branching interwoven network or framework. They are tough but flexible, and they are very abundant within organs such as the lymph nodes, spleen, and liver. Lastly, we have the elastic fibers. They contain the protein elastin. They are 
branching wavy fibers. You can often see them easily within any tissue slides. They will stretch and recoil very easily. They are usually yellow in color when you look at a fresh slide. They will help retort the organ or tissue back to its normal shape after stretching, often found in the skin, lungs, and arteries. Lastly, we have the ground substance. This is the non-living material produced by connective tissue cells. They, it contains a lot of different large molecules and water. This is the site where the cells and the protein fibers that we've already talked about reside. It may be viscous, such as in blood. It can be semi-solid, such as in cartilage. And it may be solid, such as in bone. So, the ground substance plus the protein fibers equal the extracellular matrix. Here is a picture showing the different parts of the extracellular matrix. We can see from the pictures that in the extracellular matrix you have the protein fibers. We can see the elastic, collagen, and reticular clearly shown. We see the ground substance around the fibers and then we could see examples of the resonance cells themselves such as the mesenchymal macrophage adipocyte and fibroblast now the functions of connective tissue one is in physical protection such as the bones of the skull protect delicate organs the adipose tissue protects the kidneys and posterior eyes you have support and structural frame Work, the bones as a framework for the body, cartilage in the trachea keeping it open so it doesn't collapse. You also have supportive tissues around the kidney and spleen that help hold them in place. We have the bonding of structures. We can bond bone to bone with ligaments. We have tendons bonding muscle to bone. And we also have dense irregular tissue which is in the skin that helps anchor it to the muscle and bone itself. We have storage. Adipose tissue is used to store energy. We also have the bones, which is storing calcium and phosphorus. Transport. The connective tissue blood will carry nutrients, gases, and waste throughout the body. We have immune protection. The leukocytes protecting the body against disease. Keep in mind we find a lot of leukocytes within the extracellular matrix of these tissues. And because of the extracellular matrix, some of that being a semi-solid will restrict the movement of infectious organisms and keep them from spreading. 